is Tom, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. We're returning to the campaign we sort of started last time. We haven't actually clicked Start Campaign yet, but we're almost there. What we did cover last time was the construction of our ships, the designs. Now, what you might notice from last time is that there's a few new DD designs in here. Let's go and have a look at them. So, this was our, our Empire class, which we designed. And you can see the sort of four guns, various torpedo layout we went with. Now, what I didn't realise when I put this, somehow I missed it. This thing has a pretty bad weight offset, a uh, pretty bad four weight offset, um, which isn't too bad in a destroyer, but I wanted to make it better. Um, so then I quickly put together this one and somehow managed to give it a weight offset just as bad. So third time's a charm. Here we have the Norfolk class of destroyers. Now these things are practically identical to the Empire class we built. The main thing you'll notice is I've moved these torpedo launchers around and we've actually squeezed a fifth four inch gun in there. So overall it's got exactly the same parameters in terms of armament, no armor, these sorts of things. The only real difference is the extra gun and we've changed the layout to mitigate the weight offset. I've actually decreased the turret, no not the turret, the funnel, so this is I think the cheapest and lightest funnel because it does exactly the same job, gets us to 100% engine efficiency and with the weight saved I'm able to squeeze in this extra gun. I'm also using these lighter barbettes because on a destroyer it adds up quite a lot. But that's the main change that we've had from last time. The last thing I need to do is delete these old classes. Goodbye Empire, goodbye Oxford. Now, as a quick reminder from last episode, we have designed our various ships. We have the Queen Elizabeth class battleships, the Resolute class battlecruisers. Just ignore this, it's just the game being funny. Um, the Pelas, or Palas, I think it's Pelas, I'm not sure, uh, air quotes, heavy cruisers, um, the Curacao class light cruisers, as cursed as they are, and now our Norfolk class destroyers. I think the ship I'm actually proudest of, proudest of in this entire retinue. Anyway, we're not going to focus too much on that. I do need to delete these out of this list as well for some reason. Hopefully that will get fixed at some point. Anyway, where to begin? So, importantly, before we hit start campaign, we need to order our fleet. Now the Germans, we were told what the Germans have up here. And I've found, in fact, you don't need to build number to number the same as the Germans have, as long as you have enough to deal with them. Now, that's obviously this campaign specific, and as the game updates, that's probably going to change, and number parity... Uh, numerical parity is probably going to become much more important, but at the moment it's more about skill. Anyway, to begin with I want to explain a few things of how this campaign works. We've got the finance tab, where you've got three sliders, all of which are very important, your naval funds, your crew pool, where you can manage your shipyard size, and how much you're earning. Now how much you're earning is actually completely independent on your transport capacity, so we're going to max that. Next, you're going to max the crew training because as you can imagine, having a trained crew is absolutely essential for ensuring that a ship does what it's meant to and doesn't have massive penalties on all of its main stats. Next, we're going to up the tech budget to the maximum, but that is probably going to be put back down once we've ordered our ships because the monthly balance will probably be in the red. The last thing we're going to do is order a 5,000 ton improvement on our building yard because I want to be able to build better dreadnoughts. And then we're going to leave this page. Most of this stuff is pretty much just statistics that we can ignore. Um, I assume it will become far more important in the, the future. I'm going to touch on research briefly. The research is very early access. You have three priorities, three of them, that is, that you can assign. But these are slightly confusing because... I can assign one to internal protection, for example, which has 11 months on it, and it goes down to 6. But if I will then, you notice, 
everything else, so 39, 39, goes to 59. So it's a balancing act, but it gets worse because if I was to then prioritize rangefinders as well, this goes to 26 months, this goes to 78, and this goes to 8. So in fact, although you've got three of them to use, you only really want to use one. So you've got to sort of sit here and think to yourself, mm, what's the best to focus on? And given how terrible our cruisers are, I'm going to focus on cruiser design and hope that we get new cruiser hulls. I can see a light cruiser 2 hull in there, which might be very nice. And also the displacement will go up, so that is what we're going to focus on for the next four months. The Germans have 7, 3, 10, 13, and 9 of each. So I'm going to build a relatively similar, but not the same composition. I'm only going to have 5 battleships. So you can see they are expensive. I'm going to build 4 battle cruisers because of the fact that it's a battlecruiser hull it's probably m I'm going to bank on it being better than the Germans so I'm only going to build 8 of them I'm going to only build 10 of these crappy light cruisers he grits his teeth saying I think I might yes I'm going to build 10 of them um, I could comfortably build 14 of them and have mm, hardly any money left but now you see so we've got very little money left the monthly budget is terrible, and as I said earlier, this is where the tech budget gets thrown in the bin. We're going to put that on 75%, and yes, while our cruiser design is still four months away, you notice that some numbers have already changed, so that's something we're just going to have to bear with, and when things become a little bit more manageable, we will um, hopefully improve, but the transport capacity I've found you must, must always be pumping these out as much as you can, because you're going to lose some, and if you lose too many, your economy will be crippled. Now you see, we've got 41 ships being built, the Germans have 42, so we have actually built number pa numeric, almost numerical parity, but we're not class for class. You'll see why. Anyway, that's everything ordered. The last thing we need to do is click this button, so that when crew is lost, it's re-added. And secondly, I want to put at least three of my, hmm, three, there we go, sorry. This menu is, of course, not great, but I feel like I should stress that this is a very early access game. <laughs> now, you notice I'm assigning most things to Scapa Flow and North Sea Ah, that's interesting. I've just realised I've put... I need to differentiate between the Resolute class, which are the Battle Cruisers, and the Palace, Palace, which are the Heavy Cruisers. Um, I want three of my four Battle Cruisers in the North Sea, and I want a lot of my Heavy Cruisers in there as well, because the Germans rarely operate anywhere but. So I'm assigning a lot of these ships to North Sea ports. The light cruisers and destroyers, I will happily let them uh, let assign themselves el elsewhere, as they can just choose where they want to be. And if I need more where in certain sea zones, I can do as such. Now, amazingly, we are finally ready to begin. So, let's go, shall we? Boom! Get used to hearing that. There we go. Right. Now... Nothing happens in January of any the, the first month, because it's just beginning. But the only thing we must go and do is, you see, we currently haven't got any ships in the water. Now, obviously, fleet in being probably going to be more important later in the game when when things are updated a bit better, a bit more even. Um, and here you can see me desperately trying to balance the books. There we go. We'll just have to put technology in the bin again. Fear not, for things do get better. But at the moment, with the state of the game, you just need to put everything to see fleet in being, no, not fleet being, in sea control, so that it's actually out operating. And you notice, you can actually see where certain things are. So, for example, I've got nothing stationed in Ireland. I have four battle cruisers. Goodness hope, I hope those are the light crew, the cr 
the uh, <laughs> heavy cruisers. Um, if I sort by class, there we go. I can see that the Resolute class are all in the North Sea, so that's fine. It's the Palace class I don't care about um, where they are. But you can move ships around, so they're not stuck where they're assigned. But we've got ships at in the English Channel, we've got ships in the North Sea, we've got ships out in the Irish Sea and the Atlantic. The Germans, you'll get encounters everywhere, even as such as over in the Baltic Sea. But this is where everything happens, largely. Anyway, I think I've talked for long enough. Near enough an hour, if you include last episode. So, shall we go to our next turn? And there we have it. See if we can get into our first actual battle. Now this is light cruisers versus light cruisers, but as you can see, we have a tonnage. O we have a tonnage. Um, I've forgotten the word. We have more tonnage than them, and we have more ships than them. So, now we can fight, or we can auto resolve. The brave man fights. The fool auto resolves or something like that. Uh, the only reason I say as such is because the auto-resolve function in this game is um, shaky. <laughs> you can have a incredible overwhelming majority and you can still lose ships because the AI RNGs a torpedo boat getting in too close to your battleship or something. So even if you are even if you have a huge overwhelming superiority it's advisable to um, Ooh, good lord, they they came in close. It's advisable to uh, take your fights. Anyway, <coughs> let's, uh, let's have a look at things, shall we? This is our class. We are familiar with it. We designed it. It's a raging gunboat of two, three inches and some sixes. Let's see what the Germans cooked up for us. Now, from what I can see... The game cheats a little and tells us over here they've got 5 inch guns, meaning they're going to have a higher rate of fire, and from what I can tell, an unholy amount of 3 inch guns. Which is fair, considering we have an unholy amount of 3s and 2s. But this is our first fight. Let's see how it goes. I suspect there's going to be a bit of torpedo dodging, saying which I'm going to put mine on to save, because I do not want. See, I there we go. Oh lord. Oh lord. There we go. That was bad, wasn't it? I should have um, readied myself sooner. All right. I'm going to order this to be torpedoed. Now that's pretty bad to start off with. It would appear the game also almost froze then. But as you can see, it has been like this since the 1890 start. Torpedoes are king, especially when you get such a close start to each other. And here we can see my beautiful torpedo broadside coming into action. It's not going to achieve much, or will it? Shall we have a look? There we go. That's like for like, and that's more damage. That looks like Karlsruhe here took... Ah, you see. Many bulkheads. But... Let's see, where is it? Standard inside. Standard internals. Whereas we have... Um, if I can... Yeah, reinforced bulkheads. So... One torpedo hit to one of these things is a lot worse than one torpedo hit to mine. Which is reassuring. As I have already managed to get one of my ships torpedoed. Ah, Barossa is torpedoing something. I think Adventure is going to eat yet another torpedo. Yep. Oh dear, that's not good. Right, Bar Bar Barossa. Let's see if Adventure can survive. Now, as you can see, I'm not very good at this game. <laughs> Uh, but, more notably, I know what I'm doing when I design these things to be as torpedo-proof as possible, because although this is 1920, and gunnery technology has come a lot way since the 1890 start in this game, 
there is still a lot of hit and miss action in this involved and especially you saw that we were on top of each other before we even spotted each other with this encounter especially like these smaller ships they're a little more you can be a little bit more risky with them because if they end up being destroyed you lose the crew which is a big loss but you can replace the ship relatively cheaply and quickly the painful thing is losing a battleship or a battle cruiser like this but as you can imagine you don't charge a battleship this close unless you are certain there are no torpedo tubes now ah there we have it i am quite concerned that that thing is going to torpedo us and leave speaking of which let's have a look at it emden you'll see you'll probably see these names repeated for every ship we sink uh, a, a name is probably going to be repeated Yes, they have nowhere near as many torpedo tubes as I do, which is reassuring. And to be honest, they don't seem to have as many guns. Anyway, I'm going to conclude this light cruiser fight, and we shall see what the final losses are, shall we? Ah, so, something that's just happened. We've just detected some torpedoes from the Emden here. We ourselves have just launched a load of torpedoes from the Barossa. So I'm going to detach Pearl from the division. And I'm going to... hedge my bets and turn, try and turn as violently in on myself as possible. Now, this is another gripe I have with this game. The division management system is awful. Hey, we got a hit on Emden. And I mean that. Uh, that sounds quite mean. But I can't detach a single ship. As you saw, it broke the division entirely. And this bugs out a lot. You'll get divisions just merging. Sometimes the lead ship will decide it's suddenly the rear ship and swivel all the way around to the back. Which, as you can imagine, in quite close engagements, or in at like pinnacle moments, can be very chaotic. It's also not the most intuitive thing to use, which is a shame. But, you get the hang of it. Pearl has dodged the torpedoes coming her way, Emden has eaten the torpedoes coming her way, we're gonna flank around and just kick this thing to death, really. The... Seedla? Seedla? maybe? I'm not sure. It's still out there. Which I'm keeping a mind on, because I'm going to swing that way and hit it afterwards. I can hear my ships launching torpedoes. That's not really what is necessary, but they are in range. Now, I imagine, as this game updates, you will have to return to port. Goodness, I didn't expect to get another torpedo hit. Well, there goes Emden. As this game is updated, I imagine tor ammunition will become a stockpileable statistic like your finances and your crew that you have to manage. I'm not sure to what extent the devs of this game intend to take it, but I could see, given that you have to manage the construction of your shipyards, your transports, and your ships, I don't really see why you couldn't also have to manage the infrastructure to create ammunition, the infrastructure to manage your fleets, there's a because the sort of simply the refueling and the the oiling or the colliering of of ships, as well as stocking ammunition, making sure it can get from the manufacturing to the 
to the, the well the ports where the ships are is a huge thing. If you can't do that, your fleet's as good as useless. I would honestly quite like to see that sort of thing in this game at some point, but it's a small dev team and they've got a lot to do, um, or at least I think they're planning to do a lot. But so um, maybe, but not at the moment. <laughs> anyway. Well, I'm going to circle round and see to the demise of this final light cruiser, and then I will bring you back. I think this is quite funny. Despite the fact that it is absolutely crippled, the adventure is actually still over here, still firing away, because I haven't given it any other orders, and because it can only maintain eight knots, it's not really gone anywhere. Which is, um, good. They've had a 10% crew loss, and given that their crew is cadets, um, so it's not the worst thing. It could be, I could be losing se seasoned naval veterans, um, but unfortunately the repairs are probably not going to occur within battle, and they are, they are just going to operate very poorly because of it. Honestly, this is a light cruiser, and a lesson is learnt today, so it's nothing to worry about. You will notice, however, quite that this 6-incher is offline, which I imagine got taken out with the torpedo hit. So, that's why you should spot up, split up your uh, turrets. Make sure, so, in my opinion, it's better to have uh, four doubles than it is, for example, uh, two triples or something like that. Uh, you've got more redundancy. Now, I have realised... These things can do 28 knots, which is respectable, but I have no idea how fast these are, which might explain why I keep losing it. Anyway, I will, as I have said, see to its demise and bring you back. So, after a while I ordered the ships to form back up on Barossa and sail away. As it turns out, although we were faster, it was going to take a very long time to catch up to that last ship. And to be honest, it's better to save your time really. Uh, sinking a single ship, if depending on what it is, is worth it, but in terms of a light cruiser, it, it's not. Um, oh, these are actually Karlsruhe class light cruisers, meaning I sunk the name ship. It's always good. Um, you can see we absolutely flooded Emden out, and by the looks of it, I think we flooded and then just ruined Karlsruhe in terms of being burnt out. Adventure herself took a lot of flooding, but that's why you put the that's why you put the bulkheads in to stop it. <laughs> anyway, there we go. Now it's time for a perfect definition. Uh, shall I try that one again? perfect explanation of, I think, one of the final points of the campaign is victory points, as you can see. Uh, we've been assigned almost a thousand victory points for sinking two of their light cruisers, and they've been assigned about 24 victory points, uh, which I think comes from uh, my crew losses and the damage done to my ships, such as the torpedo to adventure. Now, victory points are one of the, one of the ways you can win. If you get, I think, a massive, I think, sort of 2,000, no, 20,000 point lead, um, an event will fire and the um, the game will end. There's a few ways you can basically blockade the enemy into submission and their economy collapses. It's, there's a few ways. There's a few ways you can do it. Um, I've noticed our finances are in the down the drain again. I'm just going to do that. We will hopefully it will pick up. I'm not entirely sure. I think it's just about transport capacity at the moment. Um, it doesn't really explain. And new revenue. There you are. Uh, there's no real explanation. There's a help guide for this, but it's not very helpful, if I'm being honest. But anyway, as you can see, our ships are being repaired. The two that took light gunfire are being repaired and will be done in a month. Adventure is going to be out for a few months because she took a torpedo. But that is a good summary and demonstration of how this campaign works. It might seem quite samey, but you do get some interesting fights. I am planning to obviously play the game in full, but I will be playing the game in 
the way I best enjoy it at the moment, because it's very early access, and you sometimes get fights which just aren't worth taking. And although you should be forced to fight them, you can just skip them, because of how the game currently functions. So, as it develops and updates, that will change, but at the moment I am playing it the way I best enjoy it. Anyway, let's move on. There you can see our efforts are succeeding, and the Germans have lost three transports in the North Sea. And we've also got a battle. It's a light cruiser on light cruiser. So, oh, well, did you look at that? It's Pearl, and see it, the one that got away from the last one. Let's see if we can uh, have a see if we can finish things off, shall we? Spotted to the east. So turn east, Pearl. Go to ten times speed, and let's go and find it. Okay, here she is. It's immediately turning, which makes me think we've been torpedoed, so I'm going to go bow into it, which means I've got the easiest chance of dodging the torps when they come. And it also means that I've got the... I can close the greatest distance whilst it's turning, because... There you go. There we... There you go. The AI is very, very... Shall we say willing to chuck its metal fish in the sea? Now. Ooh, that wasn't good. These things are. This is going to run, but I'm going to use my superior three knots in speed to chase it, and I'm going to try and close the distance as much as possible before it starts running. However, I think it started to run now. Anyway, this is the start of the campaign, so I'm showing you both of these light cruiser fights. I'm going to keep a running summary of the fights we take and the fights we run away, but the campaign, although fun can probably get quite samey to watch with just little fights like this. So most of the samey small fights I'm going to just summarize or if anything interest particularly interesting happens I will cover in brief, but it's going to be the big fights or the sort of interesting ones where we've got uh, big dreadnoughts or if I'm sort of should we say torpedo boat rushing with my destroyers, one of their dreadnoughts, that's where I'm going to cover everything in full, because those are the interesting fights. Watching my light cruiser just kick off against their light cruiser in a gunnery duel, mm, I mean, it's enjoyable to control, but whether I, it's enjoyable to watch, I don't know, so we're going to just play it by ear. Anyway, I'm going to, as I said, have said in the last fight, chase this one down, try and uh, sink it. What I might do is actually turn in quite aggressively and see if I can send my bow. There we go. So what I've just done is sent my bow, bow torpedo launcher off. Now what that's going to do, ah, there you go, look at it. That's going to cause them to change course. By no means did I want that torpedo to hit did I, or did I expect it to hit, but what it's done is it's thrown them to a huge change of course which has slowed their speed and given me a better angle of attack the the so what we can do now is try and close on them and get them it's not permanent they're gonna start running away at this angle now and i've got to close to that angle but it's a good tactic especially when we've got 17 eight, well, 18 torpedoes on board crikey we've got 18 torpedoes on board this thing it's more than a it's more than a World War Two submarine would carry in some cases. Well, I guess that does happen when you've got nine torpedo launchers. But as you can see, we're now getting a, a good angle for all of my guns to open up. Um, I'm gonna have to close it because we're gonna have to keep chasing. And they are if I was to ang open up too much, they'd get a good broadside against me, which would give their five inches a good chance to rip straight through my lovely two-inch belt. <laughs> So anyway, back to chasing, and I will probably just skip to when we either sink or decide to sail away from this thing. Now what I've done is sent another torpedo off, as you can see, and I've also switched to firing purely HE with the hope of setting it on fire, because this thing is better armoured than my ship, considerably, for a light cruiser, and I'm going to struggle with my guns to deal with it, unfortunately. Which is really just luck of the draw. But, to be honest, that's why we have the heavy cruisers with 9-inch guns and the battle cruisers designed for hunting these things down and just chewing them to pieces. 
it's a an attrition process and especially as the old adage goes you should never take a fight on equal footing I'm doing it here because I'm confident I can win over time but any fight should be done with numerical superiority or sort of firepower superiority at least but now I know that the, my light cruisers need to be in number against theirs to be effective so everything's a learning curve everything's a learning experience okay I was not expecting that what you might have just seen there I did my trick again with a bow launcher but with close to such a range which she managed not to outrun my torpedo so amazingly this thing had has now taken a torpedo which has uh, severely severely decreased its speed and what I'm now doing actually is opening up hopefully you'll see in a moment there we go look at them go with those torpedoes and although it's not modeled that would have just blown that ship it clean in half the rear of that ship would be no more four five direct torpedo hits in this era blown completely off <laughs> but there we go 650 crew to our 33 victory points assigned let's have a look yeah look that is just criminal amounts of damage wonderful that's another light cruiser down and more victory points for us anyway, I'm going to continue now and we shall see where we get okay we have tabbed to the next month April I think so month four of this campaign and we've got a coastal raid we have one of our heavy cruiser battle cruisers and a single destroyer up against two of their actual heavy cruisers and a number of transports this is a convoy that we are attacking now these are interesting fights because you get to run up and uh, <laughs> bully transports as you as it were now this video has been going on for quite some time so I'm going to tease you with what's to come and we are going to actually attack this convoy in the next episode so I hope you've enjoyed I hope you're finding this one to be interesting I'm certainly enjoying playing this game. The campaign was long awaited, and although it's very early and quite buggy, it's very enjoyable. Anyway, I hope to see you next time. Stay well. Ta-ta for now.